Good, good day, everyone. This, I, I'm Bill Oltan, manager of the Mauro Sedali's Corporate Governance Consulting Group. Uh, and joining me today as part of the firm's uh, leadership series and discussions on corporate governance and other topics is Trevor Fetter, who is a senior lecturer at the Harvard Business School and uh, also serves as lead independent director at Hartford Financial. And prior to that uh, was chair and CEO of Tenant Healthcare. So, so uh, really interested in talking around what it means to be on the board of a public company these days. It's, you know, every year is a little different, but certainly this year uh, is unique among many for lots of reasons. Uh, but maybe just to start out with, um, would love to hear your thoughts on uh, just as you look back over the last couple decades that you've served on a board of, of what has changed uh, in the role of being a director, the dynamic uh, within the culture of a board and, and the events of this year, how, how those maybe have even uh, spurred more change. Yeah, okay. So, you know, actually, I'd like to go back farther than that. There's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a case study that I particularly like on this topic. Uh, it studies the, uh, and we use it at Harvard Business School in, in a variety of courses, but it studies the board of directors of Coca-Cola going back to 1923, uh, when the company was founded and, and went public. And it, it's, it's fascinating because in the very beginning, the CEO also essentially controlled the board. And Oh, and controlled through a series of trusts, uh, shares in the company that were sufficient to you know, fire the entire board. So during his tenure, the CEO controlled the board. And then he retired, was replaced by another you know, CEO who had been uh, inside the company. But he stayed on the board, Robert Woodruff. And so at that point, the board controlled the CEO. And that was kind of the next evolution in the board of directors at, at Coca-Cola. And then fast forward, you know, literally a hundred years and you have a modern board of directors that you know, over time went from being controlled by the CEO to controlling the CEO, to being a collaboration with the CEO, but very close, you know, close relationships between the directors. This would be in the early 1980s, uh, close relationships between the directors very close relationship between the CEO and the directors, then more independent uh, under Doug Daft, and then of course it transitioned to uh, a sort of modern board. And I think that that, that is consistent with you know, my personal experience over 20 years of being you know, in and around uh, boards where they have become more professional. There's a recognition that it is a job. Uh, and so that job requires people with certain skills but it's also a team and it's, so it requires collaboration. And I think the you know, biggest trends are for more skills, more independence, and you know, more diversity, mm -hmm. fewer conflicts of interest, you know, insiders. I mean, you know, if you look back far enough at, at some of these board case studies, you'll find you know, people on the board who had extensive business dealings you know, with the company. Uh, in their whatever their outside business was, that and even you know the company uh, for which I worked for you know over twenty years, at various times we had people on our board who had who were CEOs of organizations with whom we had big uh, partnerships. So you just don't see that anymore, and it's you know it, it has essentially been professionalized, and I think that's that's probably the biggest uh, trend: professionalized and you know much more independent. Mm 